Call in the uh, please. Judy Bama Key? Here. Melinda Ballard? Here. Baron Glass? Here. Maria Bass? Gary Castles? Dan King? Here. Ms. King, you lead us in the prayer. Ms. Um, King, please. Praise the Father, that heaven, we truly thank you for this day. Thank you for helping us, friend. Give us guidance, Lord, as we can have the Father. Let us do what is pleasing, acceptable in our sight. Please bless and we ask in your Son, Jesus. Amen. I pledge to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Exactly. Uh, As Randy says, we went through everything, everything works, and we're good. Okay, we are good. Approved May 5th, 2002 board meeting. Next week, you can come. I'll make a motion to accept the minutes. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Recognize Dustin Steele as employee of the month. Could not make it. Could not make it. But he's coming next week, and I will present him with this one. And take a picture. And take a picture. Yes. Is Taylor and Son here? No. No, we didn't get on the conference. Okay. High school league results. Charlie Amos. So y'all, welcome Charlie Amos. He's the academic recovery specialist at the high school, and um, he shared this information with me um, pretty much uh, three or two or three days after Discord came out. I guess he stayed at home all night and worked his magic, but I was um, super excited about the results, and so I asked Mr. Amos to come and share with you um, just uh, the impact that uh, he and the teachers have made on students this uh, past year, as well as administration. Mm -hmm. All right, <clears throat> it's yours. It's, it's not to be here tonight and, and to, to brag on the hard work of our teachers and students. We're proud of all the accomplishments they've had in spite of the many challenges we've had this year and, and last year. And we know that um, we know that teachers and students aren't measured by numbers or data plots or test scores, but we know it's vitally important to use that some of the data as well as some of the data throughout the year to drive instruction, build teacher, and we're building teacher capacity to be reflective in using this data to uh, plan for instruction. So strategies that were implemented in our English classes, such as whole reads and grammar bell readers, led to an improvement in ACT English and reading subscores. Our chemistry class also carved out time to provide ACT practice during the year, and almost all of our juniors uh, participated in the, in the ACT boot camp um, in, prior to testing in March. So as you can see, our composite score went up by a point, and English reading and science went up. Math kind of held steady. We're, we're going to continue what we're doing there. We've got a plan of how, how to help math a little bit this, this upcoming year. Um, the rest of my slides will deal with the leak test. When you see the red bar graphs, that's performance score. That ties right into our school performance score. When you see the green bar graph, that's talking about pass rate, the percentage of students who passed the leak test. And when you see the blue bar graph, that's talking about students who scored basis or above on the leak test. Um, in history, we saw a 47.8% increase in the performance score. That is tremendous growth. We saw drastic increases in students passing the leak as well as those who were proficient. Uh, scoring basic, above, basic or above. Um, in biology, we saw a 13.4% increase in their performance score. 90% of students passed the leak test. Um, that That's amazing, and, and I gotta brag because one of our teachers is brand new to biology, and our other biology teachers, two, three years with us. Uh, yes. So, and, Mr. Amos, I got, I got a question, Nick, and you can probably yeah. help me out. We're seeing this. Where's the disconnect where, I guess, parents, you know, the message that I sent you that they don't see this. I mean, it's always, we're not doing what we're supposed to do. The kid's not learning. Uh, you know, uh, this is a worse school system to be in. But we're seeing this right here, which mm -hmm. invalidates what they're saying. So what, what do you think the disconnect is that, Nick, you, you can kind of chime in. Is, is it just people, uh, you know, I guess complaining, uh, disgruntled, and just want to have something negative because this right here, it, it, 
it just validates that what they're saying is not I true. I think previously we did not do a good job of sharing these successes. Yeah, which is what I've been talking about. Right, and so that's one of the reasons, um, you know, we, we started last last summer writing this district strategic plan and talked about just public relations in general and, and family involvement and keeping people, you know, abreast of what's going on. That's another reason why we, we invite everybody to the board meetings and let you, let them tell you what's going on. And when I saw this, I was like, okay, Ms. Ramos, you have to come and share this because you know it and now we'll have it on our YouTube and so they will see it and then we can put it out so that people do begin you know seeing the good things that we're doing in our schools. Which takes me back to the last month meeting. We see this but the people that need to see it don't. How do we get this to them? Put um, it in the paper. Let the paper. Well, we can put it in the paper well, and we can also put it on our Facebook page. Mm -hmm. yeah. well, all right, well, put it in the paper with this picture. Same thing as expressing mm -hmm. to you all. We can do with the uh, parents. Absolutely. Know? What That's about the signs at the schools? Can we put it on there somehow? Well, I think no, if you do it in a public form, mouth, yeah, yeah, and, and allow them to see it again, we met before at different schools. We got uh, multimedia centers. We got uh, all of those buildings. It, it wouldn't take five or ten minutes because I, I want to make sure that whatever they need to see, they see it. And if they want to complain, then that's their you know mission. But it, it does no good for me to know this because uh, again, Nick, it, it, it kind of bothers me when I see it, and I've learned not to address it, but. A lie is a lie, and the only thing that validates is the truth. Mm -hmm. So I just think we have said this for years, need to do uh, the PR. We, we, we're working on it, and we're doing it, but I, I think there's got to be a better way that they get this information because if they see it, it it's, it's something that you're not seeing either. You just want to, you don't like whoever. Mm -hmm. But this right here credits that mm -hmm. you're not telling the truth. They don't know what they don't mm -hmm. know. Right. And it's our job to tell mm -hmm. the story. I told her, oh, go down that phone and lunch <coughs> with them. And I said, oh, yeah, by the way, don't take tell your money. You realize that everybody in this parish is free. <laughs> now, you don't think she is. She don't remember what Miss Smartmouth said. <laughs> <laughs> so, although our English one scores, they saw a, a decrease in their performance score, their pass rate remained relatively the same. And those two bar graphs, they're comparing last year's students to this year's students. So if you compare this year's students to how they performed last year, 70% of them either stayed where they were, which is good, or they grew. And so that, that's a different mm -hmm. comparison, and, and we're proud of that, to, to make that point even stronger. Our accelerate, accelerated reading program was designed specifically to target students for remediation and to help them be those who needed it. Well, out of those students, 53% of them saw an increase in their elite scores. 24% um, of them increased one achievement level, and one student jumped two levels. So we're very proud of, of that progress. So I'm going to stop real quick. Okay. Um, so as part of the state's initiative, um, post-COVID has been <coughs> accelerated learning, and it's been catching kids up who um, have extreme gaps. And so at the high school, they have, is this the T9 class? Okay, so this is the, um, the class of, we call them T9, but transitional ninth graders. And so they take an English class, but they also take an accelerated reading class to try to close the gaps. And then they do the same thing for math. And so in this particular class, you're, you're, in order to qualify for this class, you have to have been unsatisfactory before. So the fact that 53% of them improve their score, that takes a lot of work. <laughs> Um, by a lot of people to and they, make that happen. These leak test scores, they're all high school or are they third? This is all high school. All this high is school. all high school. Okay. I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. This is only high school. We don't have any other scores back yet. Okay. Mm -hmm. So in English 2, are, they maintain steady performance where their index dropped just slightly to 61.89. However, 79% of those students can compare how they did last year to how they did this year. They either maintain or improve their achievement level and that's, that's definitely something to celebrate. Um, this year, in partnership with ANET, we focused on mathematics. I was able to work closely with our Accelerate Math, Algebra 1, and Geometry teachers by providing professional development, modeling strategies, and planning instruction as a team, as well as coaching students. So as a result of their hard work, Algebra 1 saw a 35.5% increase in their performance score along with student proficiency increasing to 
um, the accelerated math class, that those students take that along with Algebra 1, 76 percent of those students show an increase in their skill score. Um, Ms. Amos, just a question, Nick. So I'm sitting there thinking, I, I would say that irregardless as to what COVID did, we still made some gains and we can say that we pretty much beat COVID. Absolutely. Not, not in a sense from a medical standpoint, mm -hmm. but it, it did deter us from educating our kid. Mm -hmm. and, and I guess that's the point uh, that I, me personally would like, you know, kind of hone in. We still didn't lose even though we had this unforeseen thing that come out of, you know, thin air. We still were able to educate your kid. And uh, if, if you don't believe that, I think the time should be taken that you go to the classroom, uh, you make time to come to the superintendent, uh, the uh, the directors, or whoever. But again, I just think the the, the false impression that's given mm -hmm. that we don't educate this is the worst uh, school system it could be. That's what bothered me because uh -huh. it's not. Mm -hmm. So, so look at that unsatisfactory. You see the big blue bar. 27 that's unsatisfactory means you don't pass and in high school that means you you have to keep retaking that test in order to graduate oh. so they were at 27 unsatisfactories and they decreased that to 10 so 17 students who were previously not going to graduate with a, a math score are now going to mm -hmm. that's huge well they were and they were relentless I mean mm -hmm. they they mr. Amos met with teachers and they planned <coughs> and they and they were pushed out of their comfort zone yeah. quite a bit we partnered with a net with achievement network um, and that is you know it it's mm -hmm. a good thing that's what we saw all the growth at the junior high with and that's why we tried to expand it to all the other schools is that when you really start working with standards and, and making sure that students are prepared and, and we don't get off track and, we, and you have somebody pressing, 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 making sure. Um, and I know Mr. Wells could probably attest too, Mr. Amos is not only in there with the teachers, he's in the classroom working with the teachers and the students as well, you know, so. That's, that's what I'm about to say, you gotta give the teacher the credit. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, absolutely. But, but they're, they're beat down every day from any angle, whether it's and, and nobody knows they're going through it inside the classroom. Mm -hmm. And to that point, when, when scores came out, one of the reasons I worked so hard on, on the presentation is because mm -hmm. I wanted the teachers to come in and us celebrate with the teachers. Mm -hmm. You did a great job. Mm -hmm. Yes. And we found something to celebrate all across mm -hmm. the board. And so the Tuesday after graduation, we had a celebration PLC. Mm -hmm. The teachers came in to do that. And it was just, it was something that was needed to be done. Because mm -hmm. you said it well, teachers feel they feel beat down. We needed something yeah. to celebrate. And I think if they hear from the right people, mm -hmm. it, it encourages them to, uh, that they, you know, that they, they want. I agree. Yeah, and one of the issues is uh, people look at the news and they apply that mm -hmm. to our system. Right? Mm -hmm. Brother Vlad says something. I know for a fact, people, oh man, they ain't doing that. Mm -hmm. blah, 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 my kids. You know. So in, in this respect here, as he said, they need to see this. Mm -hmm with their own eyes and see that, you know, hey, we're doing good. I've heard it. We need to hear that. This we is need to see the this good news, okay, you know, we're not the bad news. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> you hear me? And that good news never makes it. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's almost like you want to give them a parade or something. Oh, right? yes, yes. We could do that. We yeah. could do that. We've got a new raw road to do it. <laughs> 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 So our, our last uh, test to talk about is geometry. Ninety-six percent of our students pass the geometry lead test. Ninety-six percent. Ninety-six percent pass geometry. Wow. And, and wow. we saw a twenty-one percent increase in that score. And and just to to which I should have said this with algebra. In, in algebra, we had a teacher who it was her first year in algebra one, and we had another teacher who was second year in algebra mm -hmm. one. So we had that growth. For geometry, this was this, this lady's first. Here teaching geometry, and we had this growth. So we have all the. Miss Foy, teach you the geometry? No. She taught all the upper level. Uh, she upper level. level. Mm -hmm. So, as you can see, we've, we've got a lot of great things to celebrate. There's a lot of work still to be done, but I'm excited about the shifts that's taking place this year, and especially this spring, because you talk about how we beat COVID. When masks came off, and we could begin collaborating and having students. 
working groups together. And, and Coach Wells came in and he told our teachers to challenge our teachers, get students off the homework. And I said, it's not that homeworks are bad, but get students back to talking and collaborating and working together. He challenged the teachers to do that, and he challenged us as leadership team to support them in doing that. And look at what we have to celebrate mm -hmm. because of that. And there, you know, everybody, you know, we, you know, you said we beat COVID, and yeah, we did. But we also had to beat two hurricanes, right. yeah, that's right. a snowstorm, ice and an ice storm right. that kept yeah. us out of the building. For, for when, if you look at it, it kept us out of school for basically four weeks. Well, and, and I need to throw this in because I was in a meeting today um, with superintendents, and, and there's a big push across the state because um, of needing graduation waivers for these students. Because this year's senior class, well, they were sophomores whenever we shut down. So the state waived assessments and said you don't have to take an assessment this year. But what that meant for high school is if you didn't take biology, you had to pass U.S. history because you have to pass one of the two. And if you didn't take um, your algebra or your geometry, you had to pass that other math. And then your English was the same way. And so there were a lot of districts who had students who did not graduate this year because of that EOC hang-up or the LEAP hang-up. And when they started talking about all of this and going back and forth, I just had to kind of keep quiet because we had nothing. We had no problems. All of our kids passed their EOCs and we did not have, am I right? We had no student who did not get to walk because of their tests. So that was, that was huge. Like I said, I had to kind of bite my, and not, you know, rub it in their faces, but I mean, I was oh, like, well, I, <laughs> but they were my colleagues. But it was just, I just sat back and I thought, you know, what a blessing that we did not have to turn anybody away because of that. They all passed outright. Maybe not the first time, <laughs> you know, but um, but they worked hard and did. So. Uh, thank you for allowing me to, to present and brag on our students, brag on our teachers. Do you know, have any other questions that I can answer for you? It's nice to meet you. Ms. Daniels, this, this is my first time meeting you, but I'm very impressed. Yeah. Uh, so what you're doing, you seem like you're, you're a numbers guy, and uh, I'm I'm betting that you're adding value to what Team Nick has already built, and uh, you know, good luck to what you're doing, and keep on. But I, 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 I know a way to get. We have a YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. Okay, what, what we need to do is is have a an hour and a half, a two hour segment set aside where we bring these individuals in, post this on Facebook. They can tune in to a YouTube channel. Somehow, some way, this information it needs to get out there, and I don't think we should not try to get it there because it, at the end of the day. Uh, facts don't lie, numbers don't lie, and I just find, I don't know if you do, I, I find myself, I guess, battling against people that uh, they're not doing what they're supposed to. And this right here. Who would tell me this? Because a lot of people are No, it's just, I, I talk to many people, because and and, we talk a lot about it, uh, that for you whatever reason, you can't run out of every little rabbit hole. No, 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 you know, no, no, no. These these are people that uh, I have confidence in. So they're not just saying it just to be saying it. Either they're hearing it from somebody else uh, or whatever. And when somebody does that, I'm a type first. I want to prove <coughs> you wrong, especially if the facts are out there. So I, I think the information is there. Uh, we have it. Uh, I don't know if they read the paper. Most people don't. So. Uh, you know, I think, I think a lot of people do. I mean, I have there I have a lot of people who, um, you know, especially our our retired educators who may not be, are always looking for the papers. What you're talking about, people that need to read. Let me, yeah, let me be totally honest. Well, that's what I was going to yeah. get to. See, we right. all deal with different facts of people. What, what I'm talking about are those who have no knowledge of what we're talking about. Right. I have the ability to take it to them with this. What I'm saying is that's my job to get it to them. And I think we need to do that because at the end of the day, maybe they'll get involved because they may be misdirected or, or misled by, uh, you know, the neighbor somebody who may have an issue with Ms. McCann or, or Barron or Mr. King or Ms. Wilder. So w when you dispense all of that stuff, I think it just gives us the upper hand when it, it prevents them from lying. I'll, I'll leave it at that. Hey, so I'm going to, I'm sending this presentation he shared it with me earlier i'm texting it to all of you so that you have it and i'm sending it to gary too because he's so, watching online and then yeah. you know i fielded some calls because we did our testing different this year so like the group that you're seeing the geometry of that 10th grade class that's the only group that was at school that day testing. i like that it made a and i fielded the number of calls 
with complaints about, well, what am I supposed to do with my kids? I'm like, this shows that it worked. Right. Yes. Strictly have, we, our teachers didn't have to worry about anybody yes. else on campus except that group that was testing that thing. In English 1, English 2, Geometry, Algebra 1, U.S. History, and Biology. And their so, kids are 15 years well, old, so they be able to get a copy yeah, of it. Yeah, I'll, I'll send one to you too, Johnny. Oh, Mr. Sure. Amos, did they replace, oh, what's Gary so what's his boy's name? Chase. 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 Did they replace Chase for you? No, we've got, no, we've got another plan. <laughs> I can't speak to that. <laughs> let, let oh. Chase was a half and half <coughs> from the junior high and the high school, and we restructured some things. Let, let me show you what I think, what I'm talking about. I have a great grandson graduated from preschool. Most of the parents I know didn't even show up. These are the people that Brother Glass is talking about. They, they feel they omit it. And if we got to do what we got to do so they can understand what's what. Hey, your child graduated from preschool and you don't even show up. Mr. King, we can't go get him in the bus. No, I'm not talking about that. No, no, no. I see, I see now. That's what we're going to take. Well, they, parents got to be responsible. We have to make them feel welcome. Right. And make them want to see, be. See, you want me to start preaching there now? Yeah. <laughs> I'm, we I'm said serious. this is going to be a short meeting, that, Mr. King. <laughs> I'm going to back up because see, when you when you start this, I that's know. why we like we are now. Uh, I'm trying to say this, I just leave that alone. <laughs> but hurry up, he's leaving alone. <laughs> he's going to get it there. We love you, Mr. King. <laughs> I just said y'all that. Didn't you too, Jason? I was going to get on something else. <laughs> you know the one I'm talking about? Yeah. On Sunday mornings? Uh, yeah, I know he. Uh, <laughs> Here he goes. Budget member for certain fun. Is that you, yeah. yeah, that's me. Right. Once again, Kaylee stuck me behind some good news. So, y'all been at the top, now we're going to go to the bottom. Um, don't have a whole lot to talk about though. Uh, general fund, we're going to adjust that. But in the first uh, five columns, that's fiscal year 21 history. And then I have fiscal year 22 original budget, and that's the next four columns. And then fiscal year revised, that's what we're talking about tonight. Uh, first line item general fund, we're adjusting MFP revenue by $230,000, uh, projecting a uh, deficit in that fund by $230,000. And that, that number is kind of a loose number because I don't know how some of our indirect costs will come into play at the end of the month, end of the year. Uh, hopefully it'll balance it out a little bit more. Count on it. Yeah, count on it. Uh, let's see, if you drop down a little bit, other operating funds, sales tax funds, uh, we have $166,000 fund balance in that, and I'm saying that we might use 125000 of that in paying out the final 13th check, which will bring fund balance down to 41000 uh, That's not a big, I, the big thing is to make sure we're within 5% of our budget for auditing purposes, otherwise we'll be a finding. So I will budget expenditures, expenditures heavier, um, so that way I'm favorable on that. And revenues, I'll budget a little bit less, so whenever we come, in, come above, we're, we're to the good. Uh, lunch fund, minor change, $2,000. Maintenance fund, I might have to move uh, some insurance costs out of general fund into maintenance fund in order for us to uh, maintain our 70% ratio between, uh, uh, Nick, what do you call that, 70%? Uh, instruction. Instruction, thank you. Yeah. So, and that's a number I don't know right off, so I just went and threw it in there just in case. Uh, the remaining funds, state, uh, state grants and federal grants, those are all zero-based items. So I did adjust them to what the budget is with the state just to make sure it's in line with that. But other than that, it, there's no other changes. So. <coughs> that's is, that, is that part of your financial update as well? No, that's completely separate okay. to contain y'all's cycle. Any questions? Item F, financial update. All right. Uh, not a whole lot to talk about on that either. Uh, you know, we have the normal general fund. Uh, we're going to the blue boxes, $521,000 after taking out some one-time adjustments for the current year. Versus last year, 453,000. So, you know, favorable, but not a whole lot of difference there. Uh, the red box under uh, general fund, that is insurance cost. 
Uh, we're projected to have another 25% increase, so you can see the history of the past five years. You know, we started off with $167,000 in fiscal year 18, and now we're up to $519,000. Insurance costs is absolutely insane as in every district that you talk to. And no matter what insurance, plan, insurance company they're with, they're all seeing the same kind of numbers. So swapping is not really a, doing anything for us, unfortunately. Uh, and, and that's just a huge, huge number, obviously. Uh, sales tax fund, uh, we're better than where we were last year a little bit. Uh, I mean, you're going to make a check? Yes, ma'am, we will. <laughs> uh, if you look at that first line where it says report, that's that's the accounting report. Uh, right now, we're ahead by $1,278,000. Last year, we had 773000 and that is because we paid out two $650 payments during the year. <coughs> and that accounted for about 450000 So we have an additional $450,000 to pay out this year. So how much total? Uh, right now we got $1.2 million extra to pay out versus last year we had 773000 extra to pay out. Have so, you put a figure on what we're paying out yet? No. I just started playing with those numbers. Okay. Uh, we got to pay out the first, the, the July teachers uh, check and the August teachers check in order to figure it precisely. I mean, we can kind of ballpark it, but it is obviously going to be higher. So, by quite a bit. Uh, let's see, lunch fund is pretty much running along pretty good, and maintenance fund is down a little bit by about 50000 But again, I might hit that kind of hard with insurance costs in order to get back to the 70% from the structure. Hey, David, on that, can you and Nikki get together and kind of put some? two or three different options there kind of that uh, you know kind of let us know so when we do have to decide it's already something that we've already agreed on there's no debate about it um what did you say you have 1.2 to to pay out yes sir. yeah and i'm assuming that's like the 1200 check right? or am i that's yes, the 13th check that yeah, we pay out every year okay yes and it's just a pro rata Right. Each Split. teacher's each person's salary has a little bit of the sales tax in it every month, and so he's got to figure out the June and the July te checks mm -hmm. before you know how much is left over. Right. And then we have there's a scale that's been put in place for the, since, since the beginning of the the tax that says what percentage 80s. goes where. Eighties, I think the original. Eighties. Okay. okay. Thank you. <laughs> so anyway, that's all I have. Uh, any questions, comments, district leaders out there? <coughs> Looks like I'm the only one here. And everybody else on vacation. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, well, we ended the year, our fiscal year, it ends June 30th. Our new one starts July. So we have to spend all that money by between now and June 30th. And I did a budget amendment, and that way I have what the funds that we need using different codes, we were able to swap them over, we got that approved for yesterday, what? I think so. <coughs> and now we can kind of spend a little money now, the way we need to spend it, you know. But we weren't sure what we were going to be able to spend last time, but we didn't have the budget there. Did you buy some chairs? Hmm? Did you buy us some chairs? <laughs> no, but they put me in yellow. I don't look good in yellow. What do we get? <laughs> do we? Can we go on the cruise? Yeah, what? Can we go on the cruise? Uh, can we go on the cruise? Uh, That's just the thing. <laughs> I'll pay for it, they said, and I'll, you know, but anyway, um, our budget, our total budget, we ha we can only carry over 15% of our budget. We have to spend at least 85%. Because if we leave something on the table, we won't be able to get it back unless we do a, a, a waiver. And you do a waiver every three years, so we don't want to do a way going on the forty, fifty, six thousand dollars. We want to wait till we get like in the hundreds of thousand dollars, but we won't have that anyway. We don't get that much money anyhow. But the little that we get, we try to be conservative and we spread it around the things that we need. And so what we did with this time off, uh, uh, when I did a budget amendment, I'm doing data meetings with the um, third through the twelfth grade. They, when they um, look at the grades of the class on the preceding class and they're able to, teachers can know what they're going to get next year, in other words. That's as simple as I can do it. Kim wants to, uh, she needs about $10,000 to do curriculum meetings. She's doing that. And uh, anything that the Tyler One School can do, I can do. I can't do anything for the high school, junior high, unless it's coming from Tyler Two. But we don't get care of 100% of that if we want to, but 
Tall one specifically, you can only carry over 15%. So I have to watch that real carefully because we're not leaving no money on the table. We have never lost money if we don't have any to lose. And so what we're doing there, we are, we'll have those meet, and then when it gets down to the can we finish our meeting, we pay the little um, integrationist, a little south, not a little south, stipend. Yes. They have to be uh, principals at the school. And school improvement plans, we do that. Eric and Broughton is over there. And we're giving all the stipend to do the work with the principal on the school improvement plan. They have to be into my office by June 30th, right? And that way, because uh, you got to have a plan to spend your money. You just can't start the new year without a road map. That's your plan. And so um, that's what we're basically doing with our amendment money. And so, like I said, from now until the end, we'll see what Tower 1 has, Kim, and the three Tower 1 schools, and see what they need that they wanted all the while but wouldn't have, couldn't afford to put in the budget to the end. And uh, we had to spend what we already have there, and then we were able to, then now we're able to go back and make sure we don't leave any on the table. So basically, that's what we're doing now. And of course, I'm doing a, uh, uh, Observation and uh, evaluation for the three Tower One principals, one Tower One coordinator, and um, and of course Nikki is doing one on me. The performance adjustments and the observation. I'm gonna do it Monday, <laughs> but uh, that's what we're doing. We're doing keep scraping the money, make sure it works out, and then we're doing the observation to end the fiscal year. So July 1st to be here, and a new fiscal year start. It went fast, didn't it, guys? Yeah. That's it. Michael, anything with technology? Thank yes. You <laughs> We've been super busy since school's out. Uh, we've had all of the equipment installed at the high school and at Columbia. I've got a few little things to, to work out with some of the equipment. We didn't have the right cables. The company didn't tell us what we needed. So we're finishing that up. And the places that do have the internet in, the new Wi-Fi, it is phenomenal. It's I would say twice as fast on Wi-Fi as it was before. Columbia is already up and rolling, everything's good with there, and it, it is great. So we're, we're really excited about the new school year and all the kids getting on and not having any issues that we've had in the past. So. And on your list. Yes. <laughs> I'll yes. get it bottom. What's that oh, tower up for up. beside Brady Hatton Station up yonder? Man, I, I think that is to fill the gap between the tower that was at the top of the hill and the next one's further down, so they needed one there. Okay. Um, is that for uh, internet or it's, cell I think phone? it's a little bit of everything. Yes, some sir. of it's going to be cell phone and some of it will be internet as well. Thank you. That has nothing to do with the Mr. Wells, have you considered how you're going to help us cut costs on diesel when Jeff leaves? And it's a legitimate question because I'm on a certain diesel it's going to be totally different than what it was. And so I, I think, Nick, that's, David, that's probably going to yep. be, you know, hectic uh, running those buses. Yeah. Uh, you know, point A to point B. We have know. some gas buttons, too. Yeah. Um, this, this is the man heavy. I might be out of order. No, you're not. Those entry doors to the high school, junior high, do, do the principal know when they open? There, there are cameras oh, yeah, there at are each cameras. of those two doors. Yeah. Like, if if someone were to someone were to come into your building, would you know that someone has entered your building? And yes. and I guess what what we need to remember is that every school now has you can't get past that oh, entry. Yeah, that yeah, door. We have that you're second door. About the initial entry door. Now the initial entry door is unlocked. Correct. correct? But they have to come, and there are cameras there, but you can't get through those other, right. other yeah. doors you without being closed. Oh, yes. Yeah. 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 Those people come and shoot them. They ain't going to mess with our kids. Well, and I, and I want to, just so that you know, and I'm glad you brought that up, actually, but um, James and uh, Donnie Brooks, our resource officer, are going to a convention in Frozier City? Oh, Shreveport. Shreveport. Um, at the end of June that's on school safety. And so one of the first um, tasks that James and I have, have talked about is updating our school crisis plan to make sure that yeah. we are up to date with the latest information and that everybody knows what's going on. So yeah. um, Each school has got that glass. Mm -hmm. what, what would bulletproof glass cost to, to fill up all those schools? 
They use it at the drive throughs It's they call it bulletproof, but it really just kind of makes it kind of like yeah, a shape, sort of. Mm -hmm. Something they, they else. They put it on the drive throughs I don't know how much it would be. And I'm not sure what kind of glasses is in there. Say, you know, yeah. and don't get me wrong. I mean, this is one thing that I've had to get on to my teachers about. It's about keeping your doors locked. They've got right. to have those doors locked. And, and I've had to. to to reprimand some of my folks because they you can't just put will the not keep in the door. They won't turn mm -hmm. so, you, back. so you can you can legally keep that door locked. Yeah, because they can yeah. students can exit yeah. with with the door locked. I'm talking about you just can't get in. Yeah, yeah. it's it's a if oh, there's no, a if right. a truly in the building, he can go up down the hall. All, yes. all inside doors. Locked. Yes, sir. From the from the outside. Okay, no, yeah, from the inside, it's locked. You can get out. You can get out. You know, you're going into a classroom. Yeah, new door inside that could be locked. Well, that's just like these doors here. Mm -hmm. If that door is locked, you can still get out from in here. Yeah. You just can't get in. Yeah. 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 That door is locked. You can still get out from in here. You just can't get in. Well, I think the crisis management plan needs to be up. Absolutely. Based on. Am I behind time? What's what's my room? I was up there by that. Every student cell phone can be on, but they can't use it. And they have to be in an off position here. Mm -hmm. That's the policy. The policy yeah. Now, if we, if y'all want to revisit that, we can. But the, the the rule is, if you're caught with it in the own position, that's a reprimand. And if it's the fourth, it could be expulsion. We really, and I'm waiting for them to go to this conference to see what, because every time something like this, unfortunately. Yeah. Every time something happens, they learn a little bit more yeah. about what to do in the event. And I know from the time that I was a principal till now, it is the rules have changed every time. Oh, you yeah. know, so I'm waiting for them to go and hear what's the latest recommendations, yeah. oh, and then bring that back, and then we decide. Okay, what what works for us? And oh, what are we set up? Oh, Mr. West, did you have a lot of you had a lot of cell phone problems at high school with those kids? A what now? A lot of cell phone problems. Yes, ma'am. I ain't received mm -hmm. one receipt, one uh, complaint on. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 I was going to comment. I was going to comment. Do you want to go about people that called you and complained all the time? The Lord bless me. Sorry to hear Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Monica. Yeah. Yeah. Monica. Um, she is out of town unexpectedly, she said. Um, from Monica, lots going on. <laughs> we'll be excited to give you a full color update in July. Enrollment of three and four year olds are steady. We see the leadership team, early childhood leadership team, will be attending conscious discipline leadership training next week. New logos for both school sites are um, coming about. And any questions, I'm always available. <laughs> I, I also have Kim's report. You know, we started off our, kicked off our summer camp this um, Monday. Oh, it's great. It's great. Um, so she sent me the enrollment numbers. We have uh, 223 students in K-8. to And then, I'm, have you how many do you have at the high school, the summer school number of kids? Oh, you're talking about? Yeah. For remediation? Yeah. Um, with credit recovery, which ended today, uh, I think we had about 60 total. Okay. All but right. That, that number's going to be down, so it'll probably be about, I would say, 50, about 50 will be there for the next three weeks. Okay. At the high school. And, they, and they're remediating and getting ready for a test. <clears throat> Summer camp, I mean, because our enrollment last year was, you know, closer to 175, and so we were 223. Um, and so we're we're running a full. I try to load pictures every day. The teachers are working, um, you know, hard to make learning fun. And of course, I look at the pictures and I think they don't even realize they're learning. They think they're playing. <laughs> um, my kids go. Okay, these kids are going. I mean, they're all having a blast. Um, so this they finished up today for week one, and they'll have three more weeks. Um, this week was also a basketball camp, and uh, so I went today for their show off, and I think Coach Dalio had about 60 kids um, at basketball camp, and um, it was made me proud to watch those basketball players 
run the camp. Like, I mean, he told them what to do, but he had all of his players, and there were some of Coach Abby's players there helping, um, but really teaching them skills and drills, and um, they had a blast. They had a really good time. Next week is tennis camp, and then dance, tennis and dance next week. So um, there's plenty to keep our kids busy, you know, I mean, and they, and they have um, free breakfast and free lunch every day. I know it, they're serving at the high school and they're serving at the junior high. I think Coach Sampson brings his football players over and they eat breakfast and lunch every day at the cafeteria. And of course, it's open for anybody who wants to come and, and eat. I'm thankful much. It's a whole day. You know, today you don't leave till 8. Yeah. But, um, but they're, they're doing great, y'all. I mean, it's just that we're off to a really good summer. And um, of course, all that's going on at the same time we're, you know, having curriculum meetings and planning for next year, trying to round up, like Ms. Wiley said. I'm doing evaluations and observations pretty much the whole month of June, which is good because we get to sit down about an hour apiece and really go through, you know, the evaluation and what worked, what didn't work, what are some plans from next year. And so I, um, it's tough to plan those, but they're very good conversations. Did we lose a lot of teachers? Not really. Good. Not really. Good, good, good. Not really. But they're tired. Yeah, you do all the, all the directors. I do all the directors and supervisors and principals. Pretty much my month of June, <laughs> but it, it you know it gives me an opportunity to sit down with everybody on an individual, just me and you, and let's really just hash out you know how things went and what we can do. That's good. Um, and so y'all actually have my evaluation in here too, and I know I sent you the electronic copy, but I put the paper copy in case anybody wanted to do it. If anybody wants to do it on paper, if you'll do it and just give it to Kaylee, she'll plug it in. But that will make sure that everything goes to Gary so that he does that. Um, and I, I like the feedback. I want to know what what I need to improve on or no, what we need to work so on. Um, I also included in there. <laughs> I, really so <laughs> um, I put in here just a recap of this contract year. Um, you remember when I when you hired me? I had an action plan, and so I had um, reported last year the year one actions. I just out beside it put the year two. And then what we're gonna, I'm gonna continue working on moving forward. I just wanted you to have a hard copy of that so that you can. Um, we, we stay busy. We we work hard, and I've got a, um, a great team who, um, when we sit down to these end of year conversations, we look back at last year's evaluation, and we look at this year's, and we're like, wow, look mm -hmm. at what have we have accomplished. Yeah. So, so, so I expect a great day. Any questions, comments? The lead test for the Children, will we have, or will you be handling those, or will it be somebody else? No, somebody it'll be Christine Wells is our um, <laughs> testing coordinator, and those won't be back until probably the end of July. Okay. Two comments, Nikki. Uh, mm -hmm. One is that you make sure you take your two weeks vacation. <laughs> yeah. 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 I plan on well, taking it off the last week of well, July. I'm serious about it because no, you don't talk about it. And that was the reason why we did what we did. I think you deserve it. Yes, uh, you need to rest. You learn it, and uh, I mean things are kind of running smooth. With COVID. You know, prevented you from doing it. So just, you know, said you know, as a friend that you, I think you need to take when that. When does that girl have that baby? Because I think he's going to help fight. <laughs> Tell Bear. He's going to help my job. And uh, number two. That's <laughs> it, isn't it? Oh, I love it. <laughs> Kaylee, if you can prepare a, uh, a unanimous Young resolution for the thoughts and prayers for uh, Don Davis. Oh, oh, oh he's a former like, coach. Yes. And hmm. if we can, invite uh, either Tammy his wife, uh, like we did for Mr. Robinson mm -hmm. and some of the other ones, uh, to have a unanimous resolution prepared and mm -hmm. we can present it to them at uh, you know the next meeting. Uh, Ms. McKee, did you uh, still have uh, ideas, issues on uh, the truancy that you want to talk about? Because if, we if, need to, if uh, so, we can we, we can just schedule. Uh, uh, you need to schedule something. You know, just to. You're the well, office. I need to schedule policy meetings too. Um, we have several policies. I think uh, Forethought of co contacted Kaylee. So we have several way? policies that need to be updated, and um, so we do need uh, to schedule. We need to do it before the next meeting. Yes. Or? Yes. Okay. Just just give me some dates of time. Who's on policy? Uh, yeah. Me, Melinda. Yeah, yeah, Mr. King. Yeah. Is uh, noon good for you? I like noon. Yeah. I like noon. Yeah. Especially our all-star season. Come, you can, uh, <laughs> we, 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 them, yeah. we need to, we got to meet on this joint so you don't get yeah, some we, we, we can uh, meet uh, on that because uh, I had a meet with Supreme Court. Yeah, yeah. If you didn't Two weeks ago, so we we're addressing that. And I think they're trying to do some type of partnership with schools 
to uh, you know really kind of crack down. As a matter of fact, I got one in Hogan uh, for contempt of court. Uh, so, Nicka, that might end up being you know jail time or mm -hmm. know, loss of privileges. We, and, and I'm, I'm all for if we need to sit down and meet with the judge and, and, and line out a process so that by the time we know yes. it well, gets there that yes. it, it's, it's when you look at it, it's, it's really not that. Uh -huh. it's, it's the way the law is designed. Uh, you really can't do what you think you can do with a juvenile because you have to go through this long, yeah. uh, outdated process that prevents you from really doing. You have to do forms, uh, so it, it's not as easy as you think it is. But what we can do, I would like to be able Absolutely. to do. Absolutely. Yeah. Just and tell me what to do, mm -hmm. and we we'll, tell me what to do, and we'll do it. Because we, we, when um, I look at the um, the number of absences, and mm -hmm. you know, Miss Hillston showed me a letter yesterday that came back, and this kid had missed 122 days. You got the key. <laughs> yeah. and, and 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 the letter, the second letter, came back because it was not the right address. Uh -huh. So I mean, it just and, um, and I got you got to be quitting me. That's, that's in court now. That. Uh, had been enrolled since December. <coughs> so I mean, it's really, it's not 100% proof that we, you can eliminate we're gonna it. Take, we're going to start. We're going to do, we, we have to do whatever we can. Can we have the truancy meeting when you have the policy meeting? Well, we can discuss it, but you you can talk talk to Nick about, okay. you know, what concerns, mm -hmm. and then when we meet, we can kind of. Maybe we can do policy yeah. and then do the other. What about this? Am I right or wrong? Mm -hmm. Show us what we do now. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. we, we, see what we can improve. We, we got a good plan that's in place now to, mm -hmm. to deal with it. But, you know, the way the parish is and, you know, because somebody may give an address to date when school starts. Mm -hmm. yes. Everybody move around. Yes. Next week it may be a totally different address. Mm -hmm. And they don't contact the school. It's really not the school fault. So when, when the letter's uh, written, it gets uh -huh. there. So you you delayed. Uh, at least two weeks, mm -hmm. and then you got another month before it actually go to court. So you're still missing those days. It's, that's why I say it's not something plus, that we want to yeah, be able to eliminate. Plus, but. yeah. Plus, oh, uh, you get a phone call if you um mm -hmm. if you're not at school, right? Yes, yeah, but, but, numbers but, but you have a lot yeah. of wrong numbers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 They go cell phone. Yeah, they give a free phone. They go change. They mail court right. They mail court right. Right. They mail right. Three weeks ago, and you know they the post office will make three attempts right. to try to get it there before they send it back to us. Well, we're you know the past two weeks we're steadily getting back with, with the wrong address. Yes, that's why I said I don't think it can be too yeah. too critical on I any see. one school because it, it may be uh, it may not be <laughs> fair to that person because they're they're. A lot of things that's taking place, but if the information is wrong, yeah, I mean, it's nothing about the information. We haven't said it yet. We haven't said it. I'm gonna yeah. look at my calendar. Oh, and no, I'll just, just let you know. Oh, what about our um, construction? Our 1.3 million. So, um, the playground equipment um, has all been installed. The, oh, doesn't it? Yes. And the, um, the parking lot at the, at the stadium is finished. So now we need to sit back down. Um, we'll, we need to do that. We need to sit down with the with the budget, um, the ESSER budget, and figure out how much we have actually spent and what we have left over. Because that's why we kind of paused the, the um, tennis courts was to see when we finished all this, what did we have left over? And of course, I'm, I feel like we keep hitting a brick road, a brick wall, not road. I don't um, expect to have those numbers by breakfast. No, we're, today's our Friday. <laughs> <laughs> and he won't have those numbers. Janice will have those numbers, because um, it's Esther, she, she runs that for me. It's like but, different um, department. Yeah. <laughs> David, I, I saw you walking down the highway. I thought you was homeless, but when I got up there, I realized it was you. I made a motion of a good turn. Hang on, you want to tell me? Katie's going to tell you something. I'm sitting around here on my phone. Sorry. Um, about Don Davis. Um, your qualifying information is oh, oh, yeah. to the back. Yeah. Just a reminder. Okay. I got that from Sheree, the clerk of court. She put the price uh, or the fee for each party and, and the dates. So, just a reminder. Because everyone is on the board, good. Mm -hmm. All right, now you can turn it